bring the mind to the breath. You need to have a perception, a label or a picture in mind. As a way of reminding yourself where you want to stay and exactly where, what topic you're dealing with here. Because all the states of concentration up to what the dimension of nothingness are called perception attainments. You need a perception in order to stay concentrated. And as you work with the breath, you find that different perceptions work at different times. And that some are useful and some are actually obstacles to getting the mind to settle down. So a few helpful perceptions are, one, to remember that the breath is energy. It's not just the air coming in and out of the lungs, because the air can be held, as we say you hold your breath. But the energy of the breath can't be held. It can be blocked. But you don't really hold it. So even as you're holding the air in the lungs, the, there will be a flow of breath energy in different parts of the body. So we're focusing on something that's very light, very quick, and very pervasive. It also helps to think about the breath as something that comes in and out of the body very easily. Even when you've got a stuffy nose or congestion. There's still a subtle energy that's coming in different parts of the body. And it's like dealing with a traffic jam. You know that the traffic is congested in one area where you drive through other side streets. You can think about the breath just waiting to come in at any time, so you don't have to pull it in. At the same time, you don't want to squeeze it out. Sometimes when your out-breath is too long, you end it off by a little squeeze. And that doesn't really help. As you breathe out, you want to keep all your breath channels open. And when the body is ready to breathe in again, they'll be open, just waiting for the in-breath. Because if you squeeze things out, that's kind of a tightening up, and then you have to loosen that up before the breath is going to come in again. And even though we're focusing on the in and out breath, you don't have a habit of trying to create a very clear marker between the in-breath and the out-breath. They're all part of one element, and the element is continuous through time. If you want, you can think of the body as a large sponge or some other porous material with lots of breath channels all over the place. And then just hold that perception in mind and see how the body responds. Because these perceptions are means by which one part of your mind communicates with another part of your mind. The word sanya, perception has another meaning in Thai. It means an agreement. As if you create a, a language for the mind, and certain things have certain meanings by agreement. So if one part of the mind asks another part of the mind, okay, where are we? You'd say, we're right here with the breath. And where is the breath? It's all around you. It's helpful sometimes to think of coming to an agreement with yourself that from now on, as you breathe in and breathe out, every sensation in the body you're going to look at as a type of breath sensation. Even things that feel solid, think about, well, that's just a blockage in the breath. And then again, where there's a blockage, you try to find a way around it either thinking of it as a blockage as being more porous than you first imagined, 
And if that doesn't help, think, well, ask yourself, where are the other channels around it? How can you bypass it? Where are the side streets? The main interstate is blocked. Maybe you can find some side streets where you can get through, where the traffic isn't so heavy. Talking last week to a number of people who said they had trouble getting their heads around the idea of breath energy in the body. You actually feel it already. It's not something that you have to create. There's a technical term for this, is proprioception, your sense of the body, where it's what your posture is, where the different parts of your body are. Something you feel from within. And from the Buddhist perspective, that's form. And breath is part of the form. In fact, it's the most important of the various properties. There's earth, water, wind, fire, solidity, liquidity, energy, warmth. And instead of trying to think of these as foreign concepts, think of them as a useful way of looking at something you already sense, where the body is disposed, how it's disposed. That's very helpful to think of the primary experience of the body as being one of breath. It's through the breath that you sense the other elements. So instead of holding the perception that the body is a solid, that you've got to squeeze the breath through or force the breath through, your sense of the body is basically energy. This is how your awareness relates to the body in its most direct terms. So there's nothing you have to force, nothing you have to move around much. Just allow things to happen. If you find that there's a spot of tension, allow the tension to relax, and you'll find whatever energy was blocked by that tension will move on its own. You don't have to push it. You don't have to order it around. And John Fuhrman would sometimes talk about filling up the body with breath energy, but it's not filling it up with air. It just means basically when you breathe out, you don't squeeze things out. You breathe in, and if the body's going to breathe out, you allow it to breathe out on its own. You don't have to give it any help. Then you breathe in again. If there's any help, you help it with the in-breath. The out-breath will take care of itself. And you find that after a while, the, the sense of breath energy in the body grows stronger. Now, sometimes it's possible to have too much. It can make you lightheaded. And if you find that that's the case, well, then just you don't have to help the breath in anymore. Allow it to come in and go out on its own. Or you can simply think earth. To give things some grounding. And again, you you work with the power of perception. Because these pictures we hold in mind really do color the way we experience things. And so what we're learning as meditators is learn how to use that power of perception in a way that's helpful. Well, perception of the breath allows you to settle down. You have to explore, and it's, the exploring here means using your imagination and then trying things out. And over time, learning to get a sense of what's working and what's not, and what standards you need to use in order to know what's working and what's not. Find the mind settling down, sense of solidity, feels at home, feels strong, effortlessly strong. Okay, you know you're heading in the right direction. If you're feeling strung out, okay, you're pushing things too much in the wrong direction. We're not here to bring the mind to the brink. We're here to get, let it settle down right in the, in the center of things, where everything is solid and well supported. So the process of meditation is a process of experimentation, 
trying out the different perceptions, see which ones allow the mind to gather around. Because we mentioned earlier today that in fact, the mind is very much like a committee. And some perceptions will attract some members of the committee, and other perceptions will attract others. And you want to find a perception that gathers in the calm, solid, alert factions of the mind. The factions that really do want to put an end to suffering and are willing to do what's needed. And as they get stronger, you find you attract other factions of the mind to your cause as well. To find what perceptions are useful, what perceptions are easy to hold in mind, that allow you to stay with the breath, feel grounded in the breath, not only while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but as you're moving around. You know, moving around, you may want to focus simply on one smaller area of the body. Try to choose an area that tends to be sensitive to your emotional reactions, so you can know. If something's happening in the mind, it might be in the area of the heart, the chest, the stomach, right at the throat. So you'll be sensitive to when something has happened, and you can deal with it immediately. And if you can keep that area calm, open, settled, then you find that it takes care of a lot of the other parts of the body as well, it prevents things from building up in an unstable or unbalanced way. But essentially it's a large part of your mind's own conversation. As the Buddha said, the two factors of jhana, directed thought and evaluation, are verbal fabrication. It's the way the mind talks to itself. And as you get the mind to settle down, there doesn't have to be a lot of conversation. It can be like the conversation between People who know each other very well, one or two words is enough. Breath, body, full body. Just a mental picture. And see how long you can keep that conversation going. And keep it on track, on topic. Because that's how the mind gathers around. Not because you force it down, but because you're providing a comfortable place where everything can settle into place. <laughs>